Hey, Brie. Hey. So what's cracking? Are we starting a podcast or what? We're starting a podcast. But it's more than a podcast. Good morning. Good morning. At the crack of dawn. At the crack of dawn. Before work. We're not going to do this again, but hustle culture. If you're not getting up before work to record a podcast and work on your dreams and goals and really striving, getting that diversified income, then you're in bed. What are you doing doing? with your life? (laughs) You might as well just stay in bed all day. Exactly. No, I know. But yeah, this is this was tough for me to wake up today. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, me too. But here we are. We made it. I want to know what's going on in your life. I actually I really haven't seen you in a minute. I know. Um, I've been gone for the last two weeks. I know. You've been traveling a little. Yeah. Work schmirk. I was in San Francisco for a work conference. Okay. Which was fun. Awesome. Um, Yeah, I need some updates. Can you rapid fire off to me really quick on your career, personal, romance? Romance. Um, So, yeah. Your passions and your dreams. And my dreams. Okay. Work. Went to San Francisco. Uh, met with a portfolio company. They're awesome. doing amazing. Wonderful. And it's a college um, social media company, um, which is awesome. And they're active on a bunch of campuses na- nationwide. Um, and it's called Fizz. And it's doing very mm. well. Okay. And I also went to a conference. And then I also went to the another conference. I went to the Black Economic Alliance Conference, which was awesome. Love that. And my godmother spoke. She's the president of Spellman College. Shout out Spellman. Spout out, shout out Spellman. And also saw some great speakers like Hakeem Jeffries, who's a minority leader um, in Congress, which mm-hmm. is awesome. And some young mayors, this mayor called Justin Bibb, um, who's the mayor of Cleveland. He's nice. one of the youngest mayors, and he's black too. That's awesome. Which was really cool. Um, and then... What else? Just personal? Personal things. I'm, I'm curious, like personal, like what's been bringing you joy lately? I think deep conversations with friends. I think I'm really falling into what brings me joy socially, mm-hmm. which is really interesting. I think in college, I did not thrive because I hate large group interactions that revolve around alcohol Mm -hmm. I like them sometimes like I I love a birthday party or to go out (laughs) like a couple times a week a month Uh but I feel like in my 20s I'm really into small dinners we went to dinner with Rachel last night yes which was so fun yeah catching up because I feel like you could actually when it's Four people or less, yeah. you can actually get deep into personal updates. Mm-hmm. And when it's more than four people, it's so surface level because you don't want to ask deep questions because you don't know if other people know. Right, right. The dynamics start to get a little fuzzy. Exactly. You know, that's what I realized about why I don't like to date um, like multiple people at once or like mm. date, um, like go on blind dates. Or a bunch of blind dates. You know, people will yeah. be like, oh, I'm like talking to six guys or I went on a date with six different guys. Yeah. I don't like that because I'm so much more into meaningful connections with people. Wow. And you feel like you can't form deep connections with multiple people. I would. Time. No, I could not form multiple deep, meaningful connections and relationships with multiple multiple people at one time. I like to be like, I like to keep it like very small and close and form really deep, meaningful connections that way. That's like the opposite of what a lot of um, like dating advice people say, especially on TikTok, which is like build your roster, yeah. date the field, which is definitely good advice. Don't put all your sure. eggs in one basket. But I think – And it has its perks too. And you know what I've uh, noticed? I've noticed this the biggest difference between me and people – like friends who I know who would date multiple people is like – and I feel like you were sort of like this at a one point in time. You loved building a network. Like you loved building a network of people, whereas like that is a really good way to look at it. I think it's a really good way to like intentionally date. But mm-hmm. I myself have never been someone to like – even if we didn't hit it off, I would never would probably reach back out to you again or see you again or even think to like keep you a part of my network, which yeah, maybe that's – Oh, you're to look kind into. of like, if we're going to form a connection, you're going to be part of my life. And if we're yes, not, then, then you probably the next one. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, I'm and I'm the opposite yes. where I look at romant potential romantic connections as not I always when I was single looked at dates in three categories. Yeah. I was like, we're either going to be friends. Yeah. We're either going to be a, and I talked about this on a prior podcast where they're going to have a romantic connection or like the small third category is hopefully you're someone or I'm never going to see you again. <laughs> yeah. And and the uh, the dating, it was just like minimizing that third category. Yeah. And I don't care if we're going to be friends or or we're going to have a rom- romantic connection. Yeah. As long as like it's one of the other and that kind of lifted off a burden for me. Good. Okay. Good. Yeah. No, that that makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. I know. I think I maybe I'm just at a point in my life where I feel that I have a lot. I'm spread really thin when it comes to a lot of my relationships. Mm-hmm. And I do like to give those relationships that fill my cup and that give me energy. I like to give that my energy back. So I mm-hmm. really like to stay focused on like the relationships that I do have built that I want to continue to pour into. Mm-hmm. So it gets really hard for me to add, continue to add People. To the mix of that. Even when it comes to friendship, like friendships, new friendships, new relationships, there are just a lot of times I just, I have to turn down like meeting new friends and giving my um, energy to new people. I think that's a good question to dig into to get your personal updates as well, which is I've been struggling with this myself too. And I saw this interesting video and it was basically about how capitalism deters deep relationships because you have because kind of alluding to like the hustle culture mentality and I've seen some satirical Mm. TikToks about hustle culture which are so funny by this woman and it's you have to be I'm you have to be working yeah if you're not working then those little hours you have after work are when you can maintain your relationships yeah and it's always especially in our career right now I can always work more. I could always go to the office. I could always do that. So how do you maintain a balance for you because you have the podcast, you have Mm -hmm. your Instagram page, you have this next job you're starting, Mm -hmm. which I want to talk about. Mm -hmm. And then you also have your friends. Yeah. I mean, you really, you have to kind of categorize them into buckets. I think for a lot of things, it's you know, work comes first, whether that be, you know, through um, my day job, which for me, that's an opportunity for personal growth and personal development. And that's my number one goal right now. Like that's my number one priority right now is to grow professionally um, and learn as much as I can. So I'm very excited to be starting a new new role soon, um, which I'm excited to share more about, but at a later date, it, it, I mean, that is, I, that's something that I've been wanting to prioritize for this year. So again, that's going to be my first priority. And it's, that's like what I like to tell a lot of my friends too, right? Is like, I'm starting a new role. I'm very excited about it. Um, so that way everyone kind of like can then set their expectations. And I remember whenever you were starting a new role, it takes, there's a transition period, right? Mm-hmm. There's a transition period, an onboarding period, a period where you have to get acclimated to like a new routine, to that work setting, that work culture, that environment. Um, this is going to be a completely brand new environment for me. So it's like kind of like setting those expectations to my friends. Like it's just going to be different. It's going to be a period of like where I might not be able to give things as much of my attention as I would like to. Mm-hmm. And then everything else, right? Then I prioritize obviously like, you know, partnerships because that's also um, another source of income for me. It's a podcast because that's something that I'm really passionate about doing on the side. So everyone kind of like is very aware of that. And I, you know, even whenever we're at dinner with friends, it's like, oh, we're recording tomorrow. So that way everyone knows that you're not just, you know, you're not just dilly-dallying around the house or maybe you're not in the office 24-7. So that way someone's like, Seth, all you do is work. Mm-hmm. Um, you're setting those expectations that you, there are so many other things that are calling at your attention. And then, yeah, focusing in on those relationships that fill my cup. And there are moments in time where I do have the space and the capacity to go out of my way to make new friends. Um, for example, we met a lot of people, really cool, awesome people at the event that we hosted with Boys Club. Mm-hmm. And um, I took some numbers away from that. People that I'm really dying to like meet up with and hang out with, I just can't necessarily give that my full attention right now. So I try not to overcommit to things, you know, like I 
I actually had to tell someone, I'll reach back out to you at the end of the month whenever my schedule kind of becomes a little bit more solidified and firm because right now I'm just too in flux. I know I'm not going to be able to give that person my attention that they need um, to start to form and cultivate a new relationship. Mm -hmm. But then also, you know, I do try to prioritize the people that I just are like good high vibrations at all times because sometimes life can get like really challenging and shitty and Mm -hmm. you just want like that support network and that blanket. So that just means that like, okay, then this group of three to four to five people are probably going to get most of my time. Yeah. Which is a hard thing to prioritize and also communicate to friends too. Mm -hmm. I sent probably four texts yesterday because there were, there are. You have unanswered texts. Well, I've, I've like 800 on their text. Oh my goodness. But I have a lot of friends I consider close friends yeah. because of the fact I like to form individual relationships. They're not in one friend group, I would say. Right. And so I had this recollection a couple of days ago where I had not seen like eight of my very close friends in months. Mm. And I had to text them and say, just so you know, I love you so much. I and want I to see you. you a best friend. And I feel I haven't seen you in a long time. And I know they're busy too. And yeah. it's definitely a two yeah, sided, two-way street. Two way street. And so I think that is really important is communicating that to the people in your life. Where yeah. like, okay, if you're going to business school and you're studying or you're doing something else and you're doing blah, 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 like I will be off the map. Yeah. It's not because of you. The good news is, is like something that I'm learning as we're getting older is like everyone is also kind of like equally doing a lot of things in their life. Like I'm not just sitting around assuming that my friends are just going to work and then going home and like watching, you know, Bravo at the end of the day. Some of us are because that's what we do and that's how we, um, that's how we, you know, rest and, um, (laughs) re-energize. But I think a lot of people, this is like the age where a lot of people are going to start veering off into different like courses and paths and directions because life is going to get so busy and pick up for so many people. Like I feel like uh, we have a lot, like a big group of friends who are like, you know, going to be jumping into promotions, jumping into new roles, going to business school. Like everyone is just going to be at a different phase in their life for these next few years. And I think that's where we're going to start to see people jump and shift immensely, like up, down, sideways, stay, you know, there, maybe fall behind a little bit, whatever it is. So I'm also constantly reminding myself of that. Like it's not, it's not just like a me thing. It's mm-hmm. it's everyone. And just because like if I don't hear from you, for example, I'm not gonna be sitting here holding a grudge against you. Like, why hasn't Sasana reached out to me to hang out? It's just mm-hmm. I know that we're at a point in life where things are gonna get really busy and mm-hmm. it's no hard feelings. Can we talk and then I wanna ask you about moving to New York, mm-hmm. but can we talk about comparison to friends and the fact that we are in a point in life where everything is posted on social media. Everybody posts their mm-hmm. accomplishments. Mm-hmm. Everyone on LinkedIn posts <laughs> their accomplishments, their promotions. Obviously, which I think is a beaten down topic, is social media is not real life. People don't post the bad things, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But how do you think about your professional growth without hyper comparing yourself to your peers which are who are who are also doing amazing things of course being happy genuinely happy for your peers mm-hmm. but also not feeling bad about oneself i think that just comes with a lot of self awareness and confidence mm-hmm. um i'm on my own path Mm-hmm. And my path and my journey looks extremely different from that of my friends. Like that's something that I can say confidently. Mm-hmm. And it's that, you know, life has a way of throwing things at you, whether they be great opportunities or whether they be challenges and sticks and forks in the road and, you know, some roadblocks and hurdles. I just try to approach things with empathy and patience because – Like, I've never felt more secure with where I'm at in my life and in my career. So I really try to not let those things get to me. Mm -hmm. You know, I generally try to stay happy for the people who are around me. And it's incredible to see what my friends accomplish. I've 
feel like I've surrounded myself by people that I'm incredibly inspired and in awe of all the time. Um, so the comparison is just not there because I've already, like I said, mentally told myself that our journeys look so different. And I think that by comparing each other, we're just, you're comparing apples to oranges. It's just not the same anymore. So I think the quicker that you can realize that you, everyone is on their own journey and own path and will get to that point in life at a certain time, um, the, the easier that it can be on you. Like LinkedIn, I don't really spend any time on LinkedIn. That's mm -hmm. not my way of thriving, way of making connections, way of networking. Yeah. Like, I think that's also because I view any sort of social outlet as purely strictly professional and business. Mm -hmm. That I'm, if you, I'm not putting my real self into that. If I'm posting something on LinkedIn, LinkedIn, that's strictly professional, and that is mm -hmm. that's how it's going to stay. Like I think a lot of people like to appear very aspirational, which is totally fine. Um, that's kind of what that is. What that stuff is for me. I don't take anything personally. I don't feel bad about anything that I see on LinkedIn. I don't feel behind on life or feel like I need to compare myself to others. But that's also probably because I'm just not on it. <laughs> yeah, I'm on LinkedIn constantly. Um, <laughs> that's not my – it's never been my, like – Go-to social media. It's mm -mm. funny that it is. Social media. I love watching it because it, it it has turned into something that's beyond crazy to me. But more than anything, I'm like, I didn't even know that job existed. That's dope. Like, oh, yes, yes. <laughs> I am obsessed with finding interesting people in – like professional yeah. worlds that don't have a Wikipedia but are sick. Yes. And then I stalk their LinkedIn and I'm like, oh, this is how you got here. This is where you went to school. Oh. That's my favorite thing to do is I love the people that I do find really aspirational career-wise. I love to go look at their path. And that also just gives me comfort in knowing that everyone's path is so different. Syria, um, um, Maria St. Bozeman, who is the old CMO of Netflix, mm. has like one of the most unconventional but then also more conventional career paths ever. She had like eight to nine to ten roles before she became CMO mm. at Netflix. And I just – I love doing that because, again, that constantly reminds me like, okay, we all started somewhere and, it, you know, it doesn't – at the end of the day, you're all getting – you're reaching a, at the same point, the same goal in life. Mm. Um well, how do you how do you do handle comparison at at this mm -hmm. stage? I also feel like I'm on a totally different path than the people I'm surrounded by. Mm -hmm. And I have actively tried to deter from the path that people kind of set set out for me, which is one of the reasons why I left working at a huge company mm -hmm. because I knew that in my life, I really needed mentorship and deep mentorship and at a small company is where I would get that, not at a large corporation. Um, I also feel like we're at this point where I can actually work with my peers, uh -huh. which is something that's so fun and so inspiring. I take it more as inspiring also with my friends where I make investor friends and we can talk about different trends and that. companies we're looking at, um, friends in entertainment and linking them up with other people mm -hmm. that can help um, push forward their careers and pathways. So I think that that is an interesting inflection of in your mid-20s where your friends become your peers in a professional sense mm. and um, they could bolster and you could bolster them up. Mm -hmm. I would say I do compare myself to other people on social media sometimes. Yeah. Which we all do. All, all the time. Just to, people that are just on totally different life paths than me. Mm -hmm. um, and that doesn't come to just only professional. That's like traveling and mm -hmm. feeling like a sense of FOMO. Mm. And I because I really like where I'm at and the things I do socially, it's yeah. really helped me not feel FOMO because I'm like, oh, well, I'm looking forward to my dinner I have with my best friend. Catan night. And Cat <laughs> Catan night, um, which happens every Monday in my house. So, yeah. yeah. We we want it, we want to we oh, want to yeah. take opportunities to answer people's questions. You yeah. get a lot of questions. 
daily, whether they be related to career, to your personal life, to um, your romantic life. I also get a lot of questions. Um, so we thought we should bring some of the questions that we get asked onto the show and answer them. Yeah. So yes, I got asked a question yes. about moving cross country, which I always forget about. I always forget that I made that move. I know. Um, but I got a question about moving cross country from um, someone on Instagram who was interested in learning about what it's been like for me to move from San Francisco to New York and what are some of the challenges that um, came with it and what were some of the things that I loved. Um, I kind of like broke it up into a few, couple, a few buckets of challenges, one of them being costs. Okay. I was never prepared for how much it would cost to move cross country. Mm -hmm. um, so – Obviously, moving is really expensive. You have to hire the movers. That's going to, you know, you have to ship things if you're going to move cross country. I didn't use like Roadway or any of the moving companies. I just completely shipped all my stuff because I was starting from scratch. Like I was starting brand new, mm -hmm. furnishing my apartment um, completely by myself. And I had money saved. But again, I was just like not, I was not expecting how much it was going to actually um cost to get settled because then you sign you sign your lease. You have to pay um not the broker's fee. I didn't pay broker's fee, but what do you what do you pay up front? Yeah, the broker's fee. No, not the broker's the fee. The security deposit. The security deposit. I almost forgot what that is. I haven't paid a security deposit in a few years, but mm -hmm. you have to pay the security deposit. You have to pay your first sometimes you have to pay multiple months rent, like yeah. first and last month's rent. Um it is incredibly expensive, which leads me to my next challenge of patience was one of the biggest challenges that I struggled with was having patience with everything. I did not get settled into my apartment for a year. Like wow. buying things that I needed, buying yeah. what I wanted to – because it was my first place that I was going to, um, you know, put like furnish and put together um, and design on my own. And so I that took me a full year to finally like figure out what I wanted to put here, what I wanted to put where. I also still have stuff sitting in my closet that I don't want anymore that I have to get rid of on Facebook Marketplace. Um it just a lot of patience comes with moving and that's a really big challenge. Like I will say when I've been here for going on two years now, I can't say that I fully um, felt like I found my footing in New York for a year and nine months. So almost two years of me just running around the city kind of like a headless chicken. Like there were so many days where I would just be going back and forth on the B and D train trying to get to my stop but kept the train was the express train and I kept missing my stop. So I literally would, no joke, spend an hour and 45 minutes on the train going from Manhattan to Atlantic Center. Are you In kidding? Brooklyn. No, I'm not joking. That would happen when I first moved here. I would get on the wrong side of the All the time. And go. Go the opposite direction. The opposite. All the time. I probably wasted two weeks of my entire life going on the, going the wrong direction on the train. <laughs> And you know, and at a certain point, I was like, "Whatever, <laughs> I'm gonna just put on an audiobook, a podcast." I know. Like, I feel like I love the train. Okay, so question <laughs> on that. Digging deeper on there. Number one is, you heard it here first, folks. Even influencers don't just pop up in a new city <laughs> and have everything mapped out for them. A new friend group, a new, a brand new apartment. No They're moving collaboration. It's a and it's also, a nightmare. It's a nightmare for everybody to move. And second of all, finances are so important to get in a row before you move. And even if you think you need to save X amount, like save double, save double, save double. I have a friend who's considering moving to New York and she mentioned like, oh, I want to have this much money saved. And in my mind, I was like, girl, that's so much money. Why? And then after I sat on it, I was like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You definitely are going to need to have that money saved before you move. Because so many, I approach a situation where like, just do it. You'll figure it out risky. Don't do that. Oh. I like take risks with my life. Like I like my life doesn't even matter. Um, definitely plan out in advance mm -hmm. how much it's going to cost you to move. What furniture are you looking to furnish your place with? Estimate all of that in a budget right now and start saving towards that goal. Um, yeah. Another challenge mm -hmm. with, with moving cross country is starting over. You know, I think it's just keeping in mind that um, 
that's going to mean that you're going to be creating new memories, new experiences. You're going to have new relationships with people. Um, I fully felt like I was moving to a new city completely starting over. Like I was lucky and privileged enough to have a core group of friends here and also a ton of mutuals. Like you were the first – we went to – I went to your birthday party. It was like my first weekend, an introduction to New York where I met now a lot of some of my – I feel like will our close friends will hopefully be, you know, lifelong friends. Um at your birthday party, but it, it was just like I had to accept that I was kind of starting from square mm-hmm. one all over again, mm-hmm. um, which can be extremely disorienting. And if you're not someone that can deal with – that deals with that very well, um, that's definitely something to consider before making that jump. And so how did you make and put yourself out there when you're meeting new people and have you met any net new friends that you had no prior connections to at all? Yeah. Um, how do you put yourself out there? You say yes to everything. Okay. You say yes to a lot of things. And there were some times where I definitely said no because I wasn't fully comfortable with going out in a group of people that I didn't know yet. Because, you know, New York, like, especially whenever we moved here, when I moved here it was summer after COVID. So there was a lot of drinking involved. Um, which I'm an anxious drinker and I know that about myself. I drink anxiously whenever I'm uncomfortable or in new situations and they just, it doesn't go over well for me. So I really realized that. Like I remember there was one time where um, one of our friends, this was really early on, invited me on a night out and I um, I was sitting in my apartment and I, I just, I didn't know everyone that well. And I like really debated like, do I go? This would be so fun. It was like a Friday night. But I was like, no. Was I there? I don't know. Uh-huh. Maybe you were going to be there. Uh-huh. But it was like to dinner and then to a party. And I had to say no because I just knew that I wasn't fully comfortable with that group of people yet. And I was not ready to like anxiously drink in the moment. <laughs> wow. I think setting internal boundaries for yourself is so important. And don't rely on your old crutches that maybe you're trying to let go of and set a lot of people – go to move to a new city and yeah. try to, like we said, have a my stomach's rumbling. Yeah. Have a fresh slate and let go of all of the negative behaviors that they had before, whether that be drinking a lot when they go out or um being socially reliant or dependent on mm-hmm. their friends and wanting to branch out and try new hobbies and new things. Mm-hmm. And it's really easy to break old habits because our brains are wired to fall back on the habits that we've already created. Yes. yes. So having to actually maybe even make a list of some of the new things you're trying to accomplish when you move to a new city. Yeah. And I'm actually do those things. Yeah. Really important. Yeah. Sticking to it. And then to answer your second question, have I made any net new friends? Yes, I have. Mm-hmm. Um, I was going to say there were definitely some moments where I would, I definitely would go get a drink or a mocktail Mm -hmm. or um, dinner with someone new and it it, nothing to that person whatsoever. Life just kind of gets in the way. And also I travel a lot. So I'm also not in New York a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. So like I said, like I need to be more aware of what relationships, what net new relationships I can take on. But some of my favorite net new relationships, I do meet a lot of people through influencing but I met a really close, a, a really good friend now um, on TikTok. We, I thought we lived, there was a girl that I had been following for a really long time. And then I was like, wait, I think we live in the same building. And we both reached out to each other on TikTok. Like, I think we live in the same building, if not whatever. So we ended up living right next door to each other. Oh. And we ended up meeting up and then finally going out. And she is like one of the cutest people that I know. Alexis Barber, she's on TikTok. She used to work at YouTube. Um on their creator team. She's going to Penn for business Ooh. school in the fall. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, I am, she is one of the coolest people I've ever met. She's like a younger, I feel like she's like a younger version of me. We have very similar um, paths and experiences growing up. And so we've been able to like bond over that. But we literally met on TikTok and it's like, and even through our podcast, mm-hmm. yes, have met some net new people um, that, will continue to stay in touch with. Mm-hmm. Speaking of which, we're wrapping up season two mm-hmm. and we're moving on to season three and we have some really big announcements to make and we're really excited about them. And if there's anyone you want us to interview, please let us know. Yeah. Um, 
I think what this podcast has showed me is the importance of putting yourself out there and being okay with no's yeah. from people. Yeah. The amount of people that I have cold outreach mm-hmm. that have just come on our podcast and talked to us has are been crazy. amazing. Has really been amazing. It has been. Um, what question did you get though? I got a question about walking through how to get into a relationship and how to date. Do you have some tips for I have some tips. I also, it's interesting because we had a full conversation with Rachel last night about this. Uh And the TDLR of that was the bar has never been lower Mm -hmm. for dating. Yeah. And I think... What it is important to frame yourself in before you even start dating is it is not normal to be manipulated, abused Mm -hmm. in a relationship Mm -hmm. whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Like it is very, of course, negative emotions come with forming a partnership with someone, but intense really negative emotions Mm. are not normal and I felt I've felt that in relationships in the past before I don't know if you have experienced that but framing of relationships are supposed to be beneficial yeah happy loving they're supposed to get along with your friends they're supposed to get along with your family yeah and it is not normal to have a whole nother life right than than you had before a relationship. Secondly, as to the prerequisite before you even start dating is no one person is going to change your life and no one person should be the root of all of your happiness. Yeah. If you are unhappy single, if you feel like you can't accomplish your goals or can't go out or can't mm. travel because you don't have anybody to do it with, having only one person to do that with and have your whole ra- life wrapped in one person's existence also isn't going to solve your problems. That is so important. Yeah. So those two things are extremely important. Do you have personal experience with that? Kind of like tying your happiness and or how you define yourself, your definition of success to another person? Like, have you ever leaned on someone so much to the point where they really actually added so much benefit to your life that you were like, can I do this alone? I would say no in a romantic sense. And I think that's one of the reasons why I haven't had serious romantic relationships is because I always saw my friends that Mm -hmm. really latched on to a person and then Mm -hmm. um, took away from their personal lives and friendships, family outside of it. And I never wanted to be that person, which kind of was the detriment. I kind of went to index far the other direction. Uh. Um, I will say there have been times I've been really reliant on family members Mm -hmm. for Mm -hmm. happiness. And I think that, of course, leaning on people is really important. But um, I think we're opposite because I'm the youngest child. I feel like I really am dependent on Mm. my siblings and my parents sometimes. And so... I don't want to have, I I actively try to be independent. Yeah. Whereas you, as a only child for a lot of your life, have mm-hmm. been super independent and have, have to, to learn to be dependent, be dependent on others. Mm-hmm. So figuring out which ones those are, yeah, it's really important. Um, I think the steps to getting a partner is, you know how they say that when you're not looking, that's when they come. Yeah. I've been thinking about that phrase a lot. And I think what it actually is, is don't put too much desperate energy into the world mm. because people can smell that and don't want to do have anything to do with a super desperate person wanting to get into a relationship. The harsh realities of dating. Well, how do you distinguish between being desperate and being someone that's single that's like, I want to be in a relationship? I'm ready for a relationship. If I came to you and I was like, I'm ready for my next relationship, what would you say to that? (laughs) (laughs) 
I would I'm say, serious. I have a lot of friends. I know a lot of people like that. Yeah, I think that's a really good question. I think being desperate is lowering, potentially lowering one's standards when dating Ooh. and not living to one's core centered self mm. when putting themselves out there mm -hmm. versus being ready is mm -hmm. being extremely centered with what one wants and desires and stepping in with that intention mm -hmm. into dating and not putting force onto any first date or any social interaction or going out with friends mm -hmm. um, because it can be really damaging when every single social interaction you have is, oh my gosh, will my next partner be there? Yeah. Will I, can I use this as a way to date? If you're just simply going out with friends, mm -hmm. it can kind of have a, put a damper on the evening. If yeah. The whole time it's like, oh, let's talk to these people, blah, blah, blah. Ugh. So there's a difference between an intention mm -hmm. and like an intense desire, which is very obvious. Yeah. It's a good point. And which kind of go goes into the second point of knowing your worth. And this one is the hardest thing to index on is knowing your worth. Um, and the biggest thing for me was honestly faking it till you make it. That is one euphemism that I think is so true, which is. You really have, once you fake confidence, and I mm -hmm. see all of these influencers which are just like, be confident. If you're not confident, just be confident. Like, look in the <laughs> mirror and tell yourself you are the best girl on the planet and everybody wants you, blah, blah, blah. Because if you don't believe that, then it's just not true. Like, you're just... Right. You, you, you can... You also, that. that simultaneously has to come with a level of self-awareness as well. Because yeah. there are times where you do have to be slightly realistic and know that sometimes you might need a little bit... Support. You might need a little support. Mm -hmm. You might need a little help. Mm -hmm. You're you're probably a little loud. Yeah. You know. But yeah, I get. I I agree with the euphemism. I really do. But I also think that that coupled with a level of self awareness, those two will make that euphemism yes. go hand in hand. Exactly. You can't be fake it till you make it and not have any self awareness. <laughs> Because that is a recipe for disaster. It is a recipe for disaster, and I. <laughs> I want to continue this conversation at, an, at a later point, but I saw this TikTok and this guy was handing out these gold bars mm -hmm. in New York City, yeah. downtown. Bars of pure gold. Bars of pure gold. And was like, anybody want this? Anybody want this? And obviously in New York, the uh, set thing is to just continue to walk by. If anybody asks you for something, right. just keep on your mosey way. And I think the reflection from that video is – you could be offering something amazing to the world. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Something very valuable. And this isn't even just in a romantic sense. Mm -hmm. You could be offering your services or mm -hmm. posting on TikToks, videos, whatever. And people could walk right past. But you know that what you have is so inherently valuable mm. that nobody can take that away. And I think that was the reflection from watching that video, which is... Some people, you know, at the core, a pure pound of gold mm -hmm. is very valuable. And even if people walk away, that doesn't take away from your value. And I think in dating, that is very important as well, which is you need to put yourself out there. That is very important. But if someone rejects you or if something doesn't work out, your value isn't diminished at all because of that. And that took me a lot of time to really internalize, which is you shine mm -hmm. without somebody. And if you shine with someone, that's even better. And they should really bring out the positive qualities that you have within yourself. The last thing is to write down exactly what you want in a relationship. And that's what I did. Yeah. Exactly how I was going to feel exactly literally to the very granular T, what mm -hmm. my partner did looked like all this stuff. And it was really helpful for me because mm -hmm. it was in a way a little bit of a manifestation thing. Love. And then also last thing is just you have to get out there. You can't be milly dilly daddling. Okay. If you want to set the intention to date, you have to either go out there and meet people or just download a dating app. 
Okay. I really like that. Thank, Thank you. you for bringing those points to us. I really think we need to dive into that next time. Maybe we bring a dating expert on because yeah. I feel like I need to know why all of my drop dead, beautiful, gorgeous friends are still single. Yeah. So maybe we can bring someone on to talk about that and how to also like tangibly find a partner. But those are so good. Thank you so yeah. much. I'm glad we had um, that conversation. So great to see you as always. Girl power. <laughs> okay, we'll be back with another episode. Soon. Bye. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for listening to Yeah, But Who Cares? We care a lot about what you think. And actually, your reviews really help us out. So please like, subscribe, follow or comment and leave a review. Even if it's negative, we want to improve. And I'd like to give a big fat disclaimer. We are not professionals. We are not therapists. We are not financial professionals. So please seek out professional help. Um, And this podcast was produced with our friends over at Yeah But Who Cares, including our trusty producer, Serena. Serena. Um, It was also produced in partnership with Under the Influence. Shout out Under the Influence. Shout out Under the Influence. Where can people find us? If you want to find us, you can find us on our personal pages, Bree Springs and Sesana. Yes. But more importantly, you can find Yabba Who Cares on Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube. Did I miss anything? I, that's actually the most accurate one. Yeah. That's the most. Those are the most important ones. Yes. So thank you. Goodbye. See you next week. Kisses. Kisses. <laughs>